Hey everybody, here's a little video about getting oriented to RStudio. When you first get started up, you should see an interface that looks something like this, where there are three main panels. One is called the console. Um, the console is what like R by itself looks like, um, you know, it, where, there, where the flashing cursor is at that uh, little greater than sign. That's where you'd put in commands in order to make things happen. So I'll just do a little, um, little basic command here. So what I did was I had a command where I said, I'm going to take an object and I'm going to call it Y. And then there's this left arrow that I made with those, with those keystrokes and said, combine all the numbers from zero to 20. Now, when I did that, it shows up here in this environment panel. Okay. So this shows that I have this value what I'm generally going to call an object. But this particular one is called an array. Um, an object that says, okay, this has 21 numbers in it that, um, you know, starts with zero and goes all the way up to 20. Um, if you also, another thing you have up in this panel is through this tab is the history command. So this shows all of the commands that have recently been sent through the console. Um, you can use these to save them, or you can just um, kind of keep them there for your reference. Or if you want to get rid of them, you can just kind of clean them up with this little um, thing looks like a broomstick. Um, down here, this doesn't have much happening in it right now, but there are a couple of um, tabs that we're going to use pretty frequently. Um, this plots one, I'll show you where um, figures and uh, when other kinds of graphics show up. Um, files, this is just a copy of the, the folder tree on your, on your desktop. Packages shows all of the various supplementary um, like add-ons to R that you've downloaded. I have kind of a bunch of them because I use this for research. You're, you might have fewer with the base setup. Um, help is what it sounds like, which is looking for um, you know help about commands or about data structures and that kind of thing. And then viewer, we're not going to use as much of, but that's used for particular kinds of uh, data input commands. Now, one of the things that's really good about R Studio is that you don't like. R doesn't have any memory, really, once you shut it off. But if you want to be able to replicate what you've done, or if you want to be able to adapt earlier work, um, you don't have to start it all from scratch, and you don't have to write this down someplace. What you'll do is you can open up a new panel here. That you just open this one called R script. It'll, it'll generate a little text file up here that'll show up in this panel. Um, just to kind of, for the sake of example, I'm going to show an earlier R script that I'd um, saved based on some data with I did with a student last year. Now, your typical R script looks like this, where you notice that at least in my setup, I have these um, lines that are next to hashtags or pound signs. Um, they appear in green. These are comments. The um, our language will avoid, won't run them, but it's helpful for us to be able to see what it is that we're doing. So in this particular example, I'm going to be plotting the skull length and bite force for a collection of recent mammals. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, you know, bring in these data, and I'm going to use this read.csv command. And what this long thing is, you can't see the end of it. What this long thing is, that's just the... Um, the place on my computer where it's located. I'll show you in a um, later video how to make that happen. But anyway, if I want to, I could sort of copy and then paste this whole thing into the console. But the way, the easier way to do it in our studio is you can just click this run button as well. Um, the other way to do it, at least on the Mac, as you see with a little pop up here, is you can also, um, it'll run anything that's on that line, or if you hit command enter, it will, or command return, it'll do the same thing. So I click here, and then it sends this command down into the console. It reads this CSV uh, spreadsheet file. And you notice up here now there's a new object under data um, that I called skull byte. So if I want to make a scatter plot, I can then go ahead and run this next set of commands. And here, just to give you a sense of like what it can do, don't worry that it's um, stuff that's new for us. Um, you know, here I'm plotting 
the bite force on the y-axis by the length of the skull on the x-axis and then these are two um, arguments that I use for labeling it and that shows up down here in this plots window now that looks that looks pretty good on the other hand you can have a slightly nicer version of it like this one I did I also sort of like um, here I changed what the icons were the shape of the icons as well as the color and that kind of thing now if I wanted, one of the slick things about our studio now is if I wanted to take this file and dump it into, say, a Word document, I go up to Export, Save as Image, and you can save it as whatever, whatever format you like, but I tend to save, save stuff as EPS files. That tends to be the one that's the um, best for, um, that's the best for different kinds of graphics programs. Now, you can if you don't you don't love this particular size that's okay you can actually drag this little window down here and it will stretch it appropriately for whatever the message is you're trying to get across and every time I did that you'll see that those values changed a little bit but this looks good so I'll just save this I'm gonna send this down to my desktop I hit save and then it pulls this up in preview now if I were um, working in a Word document, I'll just make a new Word doc here. I could then take this on the Mac, I can just take it and plop it right in, and then this shows up in my um, in my Word document. So that's kind of what this is good for, um, for getting your data out, and these results I think look a lot slicker than the kind of thing that Excel would put out. Anyway, um, you can also do statistical tests, of course, with this package. Um, for example, here I'm going to run a correlation between the length of the jaw and the bite force that's generated. So I, I basically do this little command here called core test, and then I can view the result by seeing the object that's created, and that tells me down here that my estimate for what the degree of correlation is between the two is at about 0.68 but it could be anywhere between 0.43 and 0.83 and still be significant and there's a significance test up here now you don't know this yet if you haven't taken a stats course before but this saves a ton of arithmetic for us to be able to do it the time spent learning the R language will do a lot both for increasing your accuracy as well as the justification of the work that you do and also be able to give you better output than something like Excel would or if you're trying to plot this stuff out or do all the arithmetic by hand. Anyway, that's the um, basic stuff to do. Now go ahead and do those kind of primary console exercises using the instructions for Whitlock and Schluter. Thanks.